Hello and welcome to the Gallagher Partnership Podcast. My name is John Neshes and I'm the Director of Partnership Marketing and Content Development here at Gallagher. I'm joined today by Jesse Agler, the lead play-by-play voice on radio for the San Diego Padres, now in his eighth year as a member of the broadcast team. So, welcome to the podcast, Jesse. How you been? John, thanks for having me. I've been great, and uh, about a month into the season now, and I think uh, that's fun because it, it gives us an opportunity to start breaking down some numbers, and, and they might actually mean a little something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so tell me, how does uh, how does it feel to have fans back at the ballpark? It's everything. It really is. And, and, and you know, it's funny because last year, just in a shortened season without fans, I think we all knew what was missing, but you didn't really know until they were back this year. And I mean, for instance, here at Petco Park, the last couple of homestands, we've had 33% capacity. So about 15,000 people, a little bit more than 15,000. And it, it's almost as if they're as loud as 40,000. It's really been remarkable. I think people just missed it so much. Obviously, the fact that the Padres are really good is helpful because the fans are super into it from a, a baseball perspective and not just from a going there to eat nachos perspective. But it's uh, it, it has meant, I think, so much to the players. It has certainly made the broadcast sound better having, you know, not only having people in the in the yard, but having them be as into it as they have been. Um, you know, there were, there were so many times last year when the Padres were doing these great things, even into the postseason uh, in the series they hosted here against the Cardinals with no fans in the building. And you just kind of knew. It wasn't what it should be, and the fact that we're kind of on our way back to that now has uh, really, really been special. Yeah, it's funny because in all the games that I've watched, even with the the number of fans being, you know, whatever it is, ten percent in some parts, fifteen percent up to thirty three percent in Petco, it is really legitimately loud. And, and I wondered if there was something being piped in at the beginning, but. It's not the case. I think you're onto something. People are just so enthused about being back at the park that they are yelling and screaming and happy to be there and rooting on their team. And it's it's great for the league, obviously. And and uh, you know, I think it really does help the players too. It was such an awkward, weird thing last year. So um, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's really. It's, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, just, I think there's another aspect too, and it's my own little theory. You know, I'm not a uh, sound physicist, if there is such a thing, but. Um, you know, 15,000 people in the building now is different than 15,000 people in the building in a quote unquote normal year, because now they're pretty much spread out equally around the whole ballpark. Where in the past, if you only had a game with 15,000 people here, they'd probably all generally be, you know, in, in the better seats. Um, but now you have as many people in the upper deck corner in left field as you do in the box seats behind the first base dugout. So everything is kind of spread out. So I think when people get loud, it comes from every direction now because of the social distancing, you know, requirements, as opposed to, you know, back in the day, 15,000, you go, well, that's nobody, but, you know, they'd all be concentrated in one or two areas. So I think that's probably helped a little bit as well. Yeah, that's a great point. That's really interesting. I imagine they'll do studies on that kind of thing and figure out if that's the, 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 the case in point. But yeah, really, really interesting point. Um, so questions, Jesse, a number, 8,206. Does that mean <laughs> anything to you? It does. It does. That was, uh, I guess, the uh, 8,206th game in Padre history, going back to 1969, was the eighth game of this season and the first game in which uh, a Padre pitcher threw a no-hitter. And uh, that's that's a remarkable series of facts, obviously. Um, and it was a very, very special April 9th year. It really was. Yeah, I uh, I grew up rooting for a team that was in that group that I thought was never ever <laughs> going to possibly throw a new, no hitter. It had come close a bunch of times, but you know it felt like the team was never going to get there. You got to actually call the first no hitter in Padres history. Describe that. Uh, it was I mean borderline out of body. It's definitely you know the most intense thing I've ever broadcast. You know, last year we had those playoff games against the Cardinals and the Dodgers, and that was the first time I'd ever broadcast. A uh, postseason game in any sport, really, since college radio, which kind of doesn't really count. Nobody's actually listening. There's no pressure or anything like that. But uh, it, it was it was just so fun and so cool. And it's one of those things, I guess, you know, you just kind of dream about when you get into this business. You know, you realize you're in a moment that is going to be remembered forever. Um, and that's that's a weighty responsibility that can get in your head, I think, if you think about it a little bit too much. Um, but it's also the coolest thing in the world. And, and look, none of us get into this particular part of the industry for glory. Um, you know, we, we get into it because we love the games. We love the art of broadcasting. But you do know, you know, you're not foolish. You do know that you might end up being associated with something that, you know, two, three, four generations from now, 
long after we're gone. They're still going to be playing the tape up. Uh, and, and that was, you know, one of those moments certainly here. And uh, to, to just sort of be fortunate enough to fall into, into this moment in time in Padre history and to be the guy behind the microphone was uh, pretty remarkable. And uh, like you said, I mean, a no hitter is a big deal no matter what. But you went through it as a Met fan when Johan Santana finally threw the first one in Met history. And um, it's it's a much bigger deal, I think, when you have to wait as long as, as the Padres did. Well, you just literally think it's not going to happen. But it doesn't, you can be yeah. you know, 0 2, 2 outs in the ninth, and you just feel like something's going to go wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, congrats to the Padres. And congrats to you for, for being able to broadcast such a piece of team history. That's awesome. Um, so, you know, at, at Gallagher, we do so much work. Uh, in the communities in which we we serve, in which we have our clients, and especially where we have partners, with uh, the the partnership with the Padres being such an important one in our portfolio, can you describe what the Padres mean to the community in San Diego? I, I think the place to start is right now more than ever. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that. One, I think, you know, just sort of everything we're going through as a planet right now. You know, those distractions, they mean a lot. But the Padres are a pillar of this community. And I think that, you know, people being able to come back out to these games, to be able to have these games on TV, to have these games on radio, even last year when they couldn't come out to the games, really significant, you know, to a lot of people. We hear that from the fans. Uh, we, we hear that around the ballpark. We hear that on social media. We hear that in the letters that we get. You know, there, there really is something healing about sports. And, you know, I, I try personally never to make this life and death because I, I understand fully how much more important stuff is going on in the world than a baseball game. But it, it's a good reminder that this is a significant part of a lot of people's lives, not just those of us who work in it. And, and this means so much to people. And I think, again, at this particular moment in time, um, you know, a lot of people really do find joy from being distracted if nothing else, by by this team. And the fact that they're really good is obviously a part of that and really exciting and really fun. But but this organization has done such a good job of sort of, you know, not only being a team in town, but being a part of the town. And, you know, I think that most Padre fans, most people who live here, they see the Padres as much more than the local sports franchise. And then, of course, you know, you go beyond that. And the fact that after the Chargers left a couple of years ago to go up the road to Los Angeles, which was a very, very bitter pill, for almost everyone here to swallow, you have a situation where the Padres are the only team in town. There's no NBA team. There is no NHL team. There's now no NFL team. And the Padres, is, this is the only city in the country that has an MLB team and nothing else in terms of, you know, major league pro sports. So there's like kind of an added responsibility that goes along with that. But I think also, you know, to an extent, uh, an added benefit in a lot of ways where, you know, this is where everybody's focus and attention is. And luckily, you know, we're at a point in the history of this franchise, arguably for the first time ever, by the way, that the uh, organization top to bottom on the field and off the field is sort of living up to that responsibility. 